And it was just another day. Yeah. yeah. Just another day. Until it went to the movies. Until now it's a movie Tuesday. Just another day. Just another day. A movie Tuesday. Until a movie Tuesday. Yellow, and welcome to Movie Tuesday. First, let me just get this out the way. Let me apologize to anyone who watched the previous videos of this series for my long hiatus. Let me also apologize for the my voice, the coughing, the sneezing, the sniffling, fighting the cold right now, and I'm losing, I'm losing bad. But, you know, here we are. I've also changed up the format. Instead of talking about one movie that I saw in theaters, I'm going to talk about numerous movies and not just ones that I saw in theaters. So, without further ado, let's get to the new and hopefully improved Movie Tuesday. So, in movie news, Deadpool 2 has lost its director and its composer, the director being Tim Miller. The composer being Junkie XL. Tim Miller left because he had creative differences with Ryan Reynolds, and I think the writers were involved as well. Junkie XL lost because, or Junkie XL left because Tim Miller left. He walked away from the project. So apparently, the creative differences were the casting for the character of Cable and Miller wanted to shoot the movie in some type of way that would have made the budget like three times more than what the first movie's budget was and going off of that information I'm gonna have to side with my boy Ryan Reynolds not just because it's Ryan Reynolds but because when it comes to a Deadpool movie or when it comes to like uh, squabbles like these I tend to go more towards the passionate person of the project and there is no one more passionate about a Deadpool movie than Ryan Reynolds. Ever since the first Wolverine movie, that's all I read and heard about was how he was just trying to get a legit Deadpool movie made, you know, that did the character justice. And that went on for years. It went on for so long that I thought it was full of shit. And, you know, and that it was never going to happen. I thought, like, 10 years from now, I'd be talking to my buddies about, like, you know, just be like, hey, man, like, remember when Ryan Reynolds was going to try and get a Deadpool movie made, like a legit one? So, you know, he ended up doing it. So I'm happy for him. And I feel like the studio and everybody else should just do whatever he wants because he is clearly dedicated to that character and that project. So, you know, sucks to lose people, but at the end of the day, I'm sure you guys will land on your feet somewhere. Um, Tim Miller, I, I didn't even know who that man was until after I saw the Deadpool movies, so I can't even, like, really sit here and say that losing him to Deadpool 2 was like a huge loss. I did some research on him to figure out who the man is because apparently Deadpool 2 was his first like full-length film that he had directed so kudos to him. Um, apparently he's got some real strong ties in the video game industry so that's a plus in my book. Um, he's the uh, co-founder of Blur Studios now, if anyone is into the gaming industry like I am, finds that kind of stuff fascinating, like behind the scenes of video games, you would know that Blur Studios is uh, they're this company who makes like cinematic trailers for video games. So if you ever look up the trailer for The Dark, or no, Arkham Knight. If you ever look up that trailer, it's a really good trailer. You should you should look it up. Um, Blur Studios made that, so you know they've they got some talent. And the fact that he's the co-founder of that company just shows that you know he's he, he's got an eye for things, you know. But uh, you know, like I said, it sucks to lose him, but he's got a pretty good resume built up, especially with adding the first Deadpool movie on there. So, like I said, he's not gonna have any trouble find a new project. Um, 
As for Junkie XL, I mean, I know that is, he's really hit or miss with me. Uh, there's some movies that he's worked on that I've liked, and there's other movies that he's worked on that I wasn't really impressed with. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd hate to sound like a dick, but sitting here thinking right now of the musical score of the first Deadpool movie, I can't really remember how it goes. I, it, it doesn't cling to my mind at all. So losing him on this project isn't, I don't feel is going to be a real big hit to the movie. So that's all I'm saying. You know, sorry, but that's all. Um, as far as like directors that they're getting to kind of like come in and uh, finish the project up, uh, I've heard that they're trying to get one of the directors from the John Wick movie. That would be cool. Why they're not getting getting both directors from John Wick, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure one of them is sufficient enough to get the shots that they need for the Deadpool 2 movie. Uh, my personal pick would be Edgar Wright. Ever since the Scott Pilgrim movie, I've wanted to see him tackle like a superhero movie because uh, I, I like the way he had did Scott Pilgrim. So I like to see what he could do with another superhero property. Um, only problem is that I feel like Edgar Wright would be more effective in the three chairs of director, producer, and writer, and. I don't really know how far along Deadpool 2 is, but I feel like they got to be at a point where they just need a shooter and not really any more input into the flick. But I would say if they decide to make a Deadpool 3, that they need to look in Edgar Wright's direction because I, I, I feel like his formula mixed in with what's already there would be a, a good mix, good make something good out of that. But... Let's get through Deadpool 2 first and see. But all I'm saying is, you know, keep that right in mind. Um, more, more movie news, more happier movie news, depending on how, you know, you look at it. The uh, Uncharted movie got a director uh, by the name of Sean Levy. Never heard of this guy either. Did some research. He did a few things that I've seen. And was uh you know kind of like this with uh, the most recent thing that he did was he directed some episodes of Stranger Things the uh, Netflix show so that's that's pretty good to have on the on your record. Um, I personally don't think we need an Uncharted movie. Honestly, uh, that's the type of game where. It's already shot pretty cinematically. It's already shot like a movie, so it wouldn't really make much sense to make an Uncharted movie. Also, they're planning on, or actually they're working on rebooting the uh, Tomb Raider movie franchise, and Tomb Raider and Uncharted are kind of like the same thing. The sexes of the protagonists are just different. You know, they're opposite. So, Tomb Raider is already an established movie franchise. I like the first Tomb Raider movies. I'm looking forward to the new one that they're going to do. So, I feel like since you're already kind of like getting that ball rolling, you might as well just focus on that and kind of like leave Uncharted alone. But, it sounds like they're not leaving alone, seeing as how they're getting directors and everything like that. So, I will say... My biggest recommendation or the biggest advice I can suggest or the best advice I can suggest is uh, decide between the first game or the second game and just condense it down into like a two hour movie and call it a day. I don't know why, but whenever it comes to making a movie adaptation from a video game, they always just veer right off from the source material. Whereas when you got movies based on books and plays, they pretty much just go page for page and adapt it into a movie. There's like some small changes here and there. I think it's like really rare when they just like go in a complete opposite direction like they do video games. But I don't know why, 
but just stick to the source material and make the Uncharted movie. Don't get too crazy with it. Although, Uncharted is kind of safe because every Uncharted game, like Nathan's, is just uh, going on a new adventure. So they could get away with just like making some random adventure for him to go on for the movies. But I would say if you really want to play it safe, pick one of the first two games and just do a movie, do that movie, and call it a day. So that's my two cents, you know. Don't listen to me, though. It's not like I play video games or anything. Um, on other movie news, uh, last thing on the docket for news actually is just Donald Glover is going to play Lando Calrissian in the Han Solo movie. That's cool. I like Donald Glover. For some weird reason, when I first read about that, I immediately thought about his part in uh, Magic Mike XXL, and I was just like, yeah, I could see... Donald Glover playing Lando. He's he, he's got the charisma for it, you know. He he could pull off the sleaze part as well. Because if you remember, Lando is kind of a slippery little one. You know, he's a he's a treacherous kind of guy when he needs to be. So that'd be cool. The real question is, do I actually want to go see that movie when it comes out? And I say that going into our next segment, which is movie trailers. Uh, Rogue One. Rogue One has been getting shoved in my eye sockets for months now, okay? It's freaking ridiculous. My excitement level has gone down on the movie, um, mainly because they keep on showing trailers. You know, I'm not, I'm, I'm watching like snippets of them, but I haven't like sat down and actually like watched, watched the trailer just because I got this whole thing with movie trailers where nowadays they show so much shit. That I feel like they spoil the movie by the time you go see it. And um, so that's one problem with it. The other problem is that I'm starting to experience Star Wars fatigue. Which is really bad because there's only been one Star Wars movie since Disney took over. And announced that they were going to do a movie every year. So it's like this hype train for Star Wars has just been going nonstop. Like it started with episode 7 where they were showing previews for that movie. It didn't help also that they were promoting the Star Wars Battlefront game at the same time. So you got those two trailers just going back and forth. Se episode 7 comes out and trailers stop for that. But then they start promoting the Lego video game based off of Episode 7. So they're starting to promote that. And then they're also talking about Rogue One. And then they just keep on showing trailers for Rogue One. And basically what's going to happen is Rogue One's finally going to come out. I'll go see that. And then they're immediately going to jump into advertising for Episode 8. So it's just like this never-ending train of Star Wars. And don't get me wrong, I love Star Wars. I'm a big Star Wars fan. But I liked it better when I could actually get like some breathing room where I can get some time to like kind of chill between movies and stuff. And now it's just like bam, 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 bam. And it's just like, oh. right, right? Another reason why my excitement level is down on Rogue One is just because it was originally going to be like this gritty, dark war movie set in the Star Wars universe. And that was really intriguing to me because that was, I mean, Star Wars has been dark, but it's been like in small increments for them to actually like do a whole movie with a dark, gritty tone. I was like really excited for that. And apparently, they, uh, Disney thought it was too dark, too gritty, too real, so they ordered reshoots to lighten the movie up a little bit. And, you know, I hate when that happens. You know, if you're going to reshoot a movie, like, don't tell me about it, because I just feel like something's going wrong, and, you know, it doesn't really turn out great. I mean, maybe there have been reshoots on stuff that did turn out great, but maybe they didn't openly announce that. There were reshoots, you know, who knows? But, um, yeah, so that kind of, like, put my excitement level down. I'm still going to go see the movie when it comes out. Still interested in seeing it, just, to, you know, because the snippets that I have seen, it looks really cool. Like, I like the whole AT-AT on the beach. You know, I'm used to seeing those walking around in snow. 
Um, that other shot of the Death or not the Death Star, the uh, the Star Destroyer just kind of like hovering in the air with that little castle in the background. Like it's a nice shot. But then it makes me wonder, like, is the movie actually going to be as good as it looks? You know, because that has happened before with not with Star Wars, but you know, just with other movies in general. You know, they're shot well, but they're not that great. So hopefully, it's it's good, man. You know, I plan on talking about it one day in a future episode of Movie Tuesday, but. Until then, it's just going to continue to blot out any of the trailers that they try and shoot at my face. <coughs> um, another trailer that I saw was Triple uh, X, Return of Xander Cage. Horrible title. Um, you know, what's, what's wrong with Triple X 3, Triple X, Triple X, Triple X threesome? something you know I don't know it's just it's a corny title uh, but I'm still gonna go see it I like the triple X movies I think they're pretty good dumb action movies you know just sit there and enjoy uh, was a little bummed that Ice Cube wasn't in it I was really hoping that you know they would do like a team up like a buddy spy movie with Xander Cage and Ice Cube's character I can't remember his name I think it's Darius or something you know thought they would like team up and take out some some terrorists and stuff but you know there's always triple x4 triple x4 some whatever uh ruby rose is in it so that's cool look forward to seeing her i love seeing ruby rose she's a very very beautiful woman so that'd be cool and um that's about it for uh movie trailers so uh let's uh Let's get into some movies that I've seen, shall we? Uh, let's start with The Fifth Wave. So, Fifth Wave stars Chloe Grace Moritz. And um, it's basically an alien invasion movie. I'll give you a brief synopsis on it. Don't worry, I'm not going to spoil anything for you. Basically, aliens invade Earth. And they attack in waves. So, like, first wave, they knock out all the power. You know, no no internet, no uh, no cell phones, you know. So, you can believe that that probably took out a good chunk of the population on Earth with that attack alone. Second wave was uh, they flooded the cities along the coast with, uh, with the tsunami or tsunamis. Can't remember if it was, like, more than one or not, but... They flooded a lot of coastal cities, kind of like corral people in the in the center of the continents, you know. Third, they had caused an epidemic. People were getting sick, had to quarantine them. They were dying after getting sick. Knocked off another good chunk of the population. By then, everybody's kind of like grouping up into little survivor groups, you know, little refugee camps and all that. And the army's also running around at this time, and they're recruiting people and pretty much drafting them into the army because they're just like, hey, you know, we believe the fifth wave is just going to be an all out war. We got to be ready, but we don't have a lot of manpower, so we got to start recruiting people. So naturally, everybody starts looking around, all confused and stuff, and there's like, fifth wave, like, what about the fourth wave? You know, what's the fourth wave? So the army is all like, fourth wave is right now. Aliens are boots on the ground, picking people off whenever they can. And they have the ability to take the form of humans. So we not only got to draft y'all, but we actually got to like run tests because we don't want to like have y'all be aliens and get all up in our shit and fuck shit up even more, right? So naturally, this sends everybody into a panic and gets them all paranoid and stuff. And during all this, like Chloe Moretz's character gets separated from her little brother. He's off going to the army base and she's stuck out in the middle of nowhere, you know, trying to figure out where he is. So the story takes place from her perspective where she's got to go across country dealing with aliens and paranoid people thinking that everybody is aliens and shooting and all this shit. And, um, and then, you know, it takes place or it takes perspective from the army where they're training people and getting them ready for battle and stuff, you know, because a lot of them aren't 
like combat rating. So, yeah, that's the general synopsis of the fifth wave. I thought it was good. I think it's worth going to see. And that's weird to say because I remember seeing the previews for this movie before it came out in theaters, and I was just like, this movie does not look that great. I like Chloe Moretz, but the movie that she is promoting right now just doesn't look that good. And I regret that. So the movie uh, came on, or it is coming on cable now, which is how I watched it. I think it's on Stars, And I sat down. I watched it. I ended up liking it. It's a good movie. It's a good alien invasion movie. It was a better alien invasion movie than that piece of shit alien invasion movie, Independence Day Resurgence. Now, I know it's not fair because that movie was a sequel and the fifth wave is just one movie, but in the subject of alien invasion movies that came out this year, the fifth wave takes the cake for now. So, good movie, in my opinion. Um, so, I, I like the story. I thought the story was pretty good. Did some cool things. Um, overall movie was shot well. It's nice and gritty. It's, you know, it's not, not at all, like, kiddish or any, anything like that. A lot of shots of, like, uh, deserted highways and stuff. I always like those shots for some reason. I always wonder, like, how those scenes were done where they just have like the whole long strip of the highway with cars all to the side or just like permanently stuck in traffic with people either missing or maybe like dead next to it or whatever so it was cool man had some good action scenes um you know they they did a good job like setting up the movie like because they because it kind of like shoot everything at you pretty fast in the beginning to kind of like set, set everything up so they can get to the whole like you know, her going on her adventure to get her brother and, you know, the army, like, trying to, like, defend the planet and shit. So, it was good. I liked it. And I recommend you watch it. If you see it on Stars or just cable in general, I recommend you sit down and watch that damn movie. Um, if you don't have Stars or cable in general, hopefully it comes out on Netflix or some streaming service. But uh, if not, I'd say even go out and rent it. You know, go over to the red box, drop a few bucks in, get the fifth wave. Tell them Chew sent you. Um, the only dislikes that I had for the movie was like some of the acting is a little janky every now and then. Like, there's just a couple lines that get delivered where I'm like, they could have did that just a little bit better. Like maybe a couple extra takes. Um. Some of those were on, like, Chloe Moretz's side. Like, I don't know if it's just because I'm not used to her playing, like, just standard, awkward teenage girl kind of roles. Because I'm used to, like, seeing her in more mature roles like she was in, in Equalizer or Kick-Ass. But, uh, you know, this I, I don't think this is her first lead movie, but it's the first movie I've seen of her in the lead. And she does good for the most part, but, like I said, there's... Sometimes there's some lines they deliver that I'm just like, yeah, that could have used a couple extra little takes to make me feel it, to like sell it a little bit more. You know, sometimes people, you know, the way they talk to each other in the movie, I'm just like, no, people don't talk like that. That's 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 all wrong, you know. But it's my only gripe with it. Other than that, it's good. It's real good. Um, next up, I'm gonna talk about Warcraft. That's another movie I watched. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> so Warcraft stars Paula Patton, Ben Foster, Toby Kebbell, Dominic Cooper, Ruth Nega. I hope I'm saying that right. It's either Nega or Nega. I think it's Nega, though. Um, who else? Uh, oh, man. There's a lot of people in there. But uh, it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot of people in the movie. Um, I'm not a Warcraft. I don't consider myself a Warcraft fan. I've played some of the games, but I'm not well versed in Warcraft lore. I think like the only location I know from that game is Stormwind. Um, I know a couple of the races in Warcraft, but uh. 
Like I said, I'm not I'm not well versed in it. That being said, I still enjoyed the movie. Like it's it's really hard to explain because usually what I hear when it comes to the Warcraft movie is that if unless you're a fan, you're not really going to like it. I don't necessarily find that true as I just said. Like I'm not that well versed in the lore, but I still saw what they were trying to accomplish with the movie and liked what they were doing. It just wasn't fully executed right. Um, my main gripe is like the the cinematography of the movie, where it's lots of bright colors. Like uh, Industrial Light and Magic did the CG characters, the orcs, right? And they look really good. Like that's the crazy thing about it is like the special effects in the movie are done really, really well until an actual live action person is in the scene with the CG characters and just the background in general and it just falls apart for me. It was just like really weird to look at, you know? And I kind of want to say that's the fault of the cinematographer of the movie. It just, I feel like they could have got a visual style to match everything up better. And I don't know. It's just either that or they would have just been better off making the movie fully computer generated. Because like I said, like the computer generated stuff is good. The motion capture stuff, the, the, the voice work, all that. It's, it's dope right even the fight choreography was really good the way that was done but it's just like like I said when you get like an actual person in there and then like even with their wardrobe their wardrobe just looks like it just doesn't look believable it's almost like they were trying to like make the movie look too much like the games right but it's just it didn't work for whatever reason and like I said I, I think it's just they if if they get a chance to do a sequel which i think they well i don't know if, no they will because I, I think they made a lot of money overseas so if they ever get a chance to do a sequel i would say that they need to spend more time with the with the look of the movie as far as like trying to get the char like the the live action characters to mesh more with the cg characters because it's just it's really disjointed um, I would recommend watching it just so you can kind of get your own idea for the movie. Uh, like I said, it's just the the balance between live action and CG is just kind of disjointed. Um, the other problem is like the acting isn't on par as well. For the most part, a lot of the actors are kind of just working. They're doing their best to like get through the movie. The only person I feel like who went above and beyond, who was like really filling their part and who I enjoyed on the screen and actually cared about was Ben Foster. Um, he plays this, uh, he plays this mage or wizard or whatever in the movie. And he was really, really good in my opinion. Like he was the only character that I cared about what happened to him. There's, like I said, it's a big cast in the movie, and they're like just people where there's big events happening to them, and it just has no effect on me, and that's bad. And the only way you would know what I'm talking about is if you actually watch the movie and see it, because you probably feel the same way too, where there's just like there's certain things that happen to some characters in the movie, and you're kind of just, you're either sitting there just like, huh, all right. Or you're just kind of looking like, wait, like, did they just die? Like, really? You know what I mean? Like, that just happened? So, and don't tell me that did somebody die is a spoiler. The movie's called Warcraft, okay? People are at war with each other. So, of course people are going to die. But I'm just saying. Trust me when I say, though. Like, you're going to see some characters in there. And things are going to be happening to them. And, you know, they're, they want that reaction of you to just be like, damn, like, oh, shit, can't believe that just happened to this person, you know, 
but it's just gonna be you sitting there just like all right that just happened all right you know all right all right all right but uh yeah that's that's the only thing with the uh, with the movie the story I thought was really accessible um, they shoot a lot of things at you in the movie like there's a lot of places that are mentioned there's a you know there's a lot of characters that are mentioned but for the most part they they do a good job like even though they're talking about it a lot when those people show up well not the people per se because there were like times where they kept like throwing names around where i feel like game of thrones where it's like they're throwing all these names around i'm just like who is that again you know because it's like there's no like real connection with the characters i feel but like the places that they were naming, um, you know, they kept on like naming all these stuff and jumping here and jumping over there and you know showing the text on the screen of where they are. But they talked about the places enough to where once they like established where they were, you were just like, oh, okay, all right, I'm I'm good. I know what's going on. Like I'm not lost or anything like that. So that was that was that was like a big plus for me is just that uh, with all the stuff they threw at you at once it was easy to like follow the story and follow what was going on. I don't, I don't feel like they throw any more at you than a Lord of the Rings or Star Wars movie would throw at you or Game of Thrones. You know, like if, if you're a fan of Game of Thrones, I don't think you'll have a problem trying to follow what's going on in the Warcraft movie. But other than that, like I, like, I don't know, man, this, it, this is a hard one to recommend. Honestly, because like I said, there's I, there's things that I see that they're trying to do, but just the overall execution is just kind of jank. So the best I can offer you is that if you see it on cable or Netflix or whatever, whatever streaming service you got, why not check it out? But to actually go out of your way to see the movie, like to actually go and rent it, I can't recommend that. I can't recommend that at all. My brother actually called me up asking me if uh if he should buy the movie and i was like no no you shouldn't buy it you know and he mainly just wanted to buy it because of paula Patton, which i completely understand because i almost did that too but i was just like no don't just just don't okay she's she's one of the actors where like she didn't necessarily do a bad job but you know she kind of like worked with what she had which is pretty much all she could do but uh if it's worth buying a movie for her I don't I don't think it is so Warcraft people let's get into movie theater stuff now okay bread and butter of the show let's talk about Doctor Strange so I went to go see Doctor Strange the only reason I went to see this movie is because the movie I originally want to see I had missed the last showtime for it, and Doctor Strange was the only thing left for me to watch, so I went to go watch it. Now, I'm not a big fan of Doctor Strange. Hmm. Hmm. Don't get me wrong. I love Marvel. Love him to death. I love most of the movies that they make. But not all of them. And uh, it's starting to get to the point now where they're doing characters that I really don't have any connection with or really want to spend the time to get to know. Like last year, I didn't go see Ant Man because I've never really been a fan of Ant Man. Never cared about Ant Man. There's other reasons why I didn't go see it either. You know, don't really want to get into that right now. But, um, you know, I didn't go see Ant-Man when it was in theaters. I Luckily, I went to go see, or not went to go see it, but it came on cable before Civil War had came out. So I was able to, like, watch the movie then, get a feel for the character and what he can do and who he is. And that way it wasn't that weird once he popped up in the, in the Civil War movie. And, uh... That was kind of like what motivated me to go see Doctor Strange because I feel like this was one of those big jumps for Marvel where now they got to explain magic 
and how it works in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, one of the biggest gripes about the movie that I kept hearing about was how, you know, like, oh, you know, another origin story. When are they going to start with the origin story? Um, dude, you got to have an origin story for Doctor Strange. I'm sorry. You have to. Uh, this is magic we're talking about here. And, I mean, the Marvel movies are already starting to get crazy with the intergalactic stuff that's happening. And as a person who reads comics from time to time, I can tell you that magic plays a very big role in Marvel comics. And seeing as how the movies are pretty much taking the comics and putting them on the silver screen... Magic is going to work its way into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And trust me, you want to be prepared for this stuff. You don't want this just thrusted upon you, okay? So it is necessary to go and see Doctor Strange. I'm glad I went to go see it. That being said, the movie was good. It was actually better than I thought it would be because I thought it was going to be stupid. I'm really, like, iffy when it comes to magic and with stuff, you know? It's like... I'm like 50-50 with it, but for the most part, I like to shy away from the whole magic stuff when it comes to comics and and stuff like that, but uh, it worked in this movie. It worked. They explained it. It wasn't like overly complex. It was like really simple the way they explained it, and maybe that's a bad thing because I kind of want them to go more in depth with it because basically what I got from the movie is that magic is OP as shit. Like, it's to the point where when Doctor Strange pops up in the next Avengers movie and they're, like, taking on Thanos and stuff, I'm just like, how do you not just call Doctor Strange to come in, snap his finger, and call it a day, and everybody just goes to shawarma and has a ball? You know what I mean? Like, it's... I, th I feel like it's that bad when it comes to, like, the power of magic and what you can accomplish with it. Um, <clears throat> the other problem that I have with the movie is that it went kind of fast. It felt really, really rushed. Like, when you think of origin stories uh, with movies like Spider-Man and Iron Man and, and uh, Batman Begins, like, those are good origin story movies where they actually take their time to kind of, like, build up the character and kind of, like, give you a chance to dive into their personality and what they're capable of, you know, and get some inside jokes working, right? And I feel like in Doctor Strange, they kind of rushed through a lot of that stuff. Like, they just immediately thrusted you into it. Like, they just went like, oh, you know, he's a hotshot doctor. His hands got fucked up. He went to this place and, you know, and he's learned his magic stuff to get better, right? And um, I feel like that was kind of fast. Uh... And maybe it was, like, because, you know, they didn't do a really good job at showing, like, the passage of time with him learning magic. As far as, like, his hands getting messed up, that's really good to show with time because we all know that, like, surgery is very time-consuming. Like, you got to go through, you got to get all cut open and get everything, like, reworked and shit, and then you got to start the healing process. And the healing process could take months, if not years you know so it's easy to kind of judge how much time is passing with that as a rushing through it right but i feel like with the magic they rushed through it like really quickly to where like i was just like how how long has he been learning this stuff because i think he picks it up kind of quick and they do explain like how he learns it so fast but my my gripe is more with him actually accepting the the existence of magic to the point where he's wielding it, you know, because basically he's a surgeon. Uh, um, what was he? A neuro neurosurgeon. He's a neurosurgeon. And so he's one of those people where it's like science over like spiritual shit, you know, like he doesn't believe in the whole, Oh, you know, if you just set your mind to something, you can achieve anything. And you know, like, your arm may be broken, but your mind can trick your body into thinking that your arm is not broken and you can even heal it. Like, he didn't believe in that kind of stuff. And the fact that he was able to jump into the world of magic so quickly kind of, like, 
irked me a little bit in the movie where I feel like they could have spent a little more time with him kind of like challenging people and being like, oh, you know, like, like, okay, like, show me how to do this. Like, what exactly am I doing to make this happen, you know? So, uh, that was like one of the things I had a problem with. Other than that, the movie is pretty dope. Uh, the special effects are good, of course. Uh, anybody who's kind of like writing it off, saying they're just copying off of Inception, they actually kind of go beyond what Inception does. Like, I feel like if Christopher Nolan ever made a sequel to Inception, please, please don't do that. Please leave Inception alone. Nolan, I know you're smart enough not to do a sequel, but just in case you don't have the full rights to that movie and it's like a studio thing where they want to do a sequel, don't do it. Please just don't do a sequel to Inception. Anyway, like, if they made an Inception sequel, I feel like the shit that they did in Doctor Strange, they would do in Inception 2. So, you know. But, uh, yeah, the effects were really good. Um, once again... Like, going back to what I was saying with Warcraft, things actually fit together in the movie. So I feel like when they do a Warcraft sequel, they need to go and talk to people in Doctor Strange and be like, yo, dog, like, how do we, like, mesh these things together so they don't look as fucked up? You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, I felt like the, the effects were really good. Even when you got live action characters running around doing shit with buildings going all like this and everything, like it all looked real, looked like it was actually happening. So pretty sure there was a mix of practical effects in there, but it was it was good. Um, wasn't expecting uh, martial arts stuff to happen. There was actually like a lot of good fight choreography in there. I also like the choreography of how they were doing the incantations with their hands and all that and waving their arms and stuff like it didn't look all like goofy like it it looked real legit so yeah that was that was some good stuff um but yeah it's it's, it's a good movie I, I would recommend you go see it if you if you like the Marvel movies if you like what they're doing um, this is a good movie to just go and watch and enjoy um, if you're not a fan of Doctor Strange, like, that's fine, dude, still go check it out, you, you know, like I said earlier, you need to go see this movie just for the simple fact that you need to get prepared for magic in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because there's gonna be a lot of it, okay, and it's gonna be weird, so, basically, if you can't get through Doctor Strange, you might as well just stop on Marvel movies from here on out. Because it's going to get weird. Trust me. It's going to get weird. Other than that, man, that's all I really got to say about Doctor Strange. You know, it's it's good. Um, you know, felt rushed. Felt, felt like they just wanted to get this movie out of the way so they could justify throwing him in other Marvel movies as soon as possible. Uh, I mean, there's... The movies... The movies funny I guess like there's a lot of jokes that kind of fell flat with me that's actually another problem that I have with the movie is that the tone is kind of all over the place like there's times where serious shit is happening but then like something goofy happens right after so like it kind of takes all the oxygen out of a scene to where it kind of throws it off a little bit so that was kind of like a thing that I had a problem with, but other than that, Doctor Strange, thumbs up. Good job, Marvel. Good, good job. Let's get on to the last movie that I watched, and then we'll call it a day. Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. Don't go see this movie. Don't go to the theater and see this movie, okay? It's not worth it. It's not that it's a bad movie, it's a boring movie. In fact, I'll tell you the same thing I told my girlfriend and my brother when uh, we went to go see the movie and we got out. I was like, that movie was boring as fuck, okay? Now, that sucks because the first Jack Reacher movie was dope 
It was the bomb. That was a good action movie. Okay? Had action, had mystery, had Tom Cruise. It was great. This movie has got action, but it's spread very far in between things like there's some action. And when there is action, it happens pretty quickly. It's like it's over in a flash. Okay? It's got mystery. But the problem is, the the mystery of the movie is overshadowed by the subplot that they put in. And my guess would be that this subplot was to humanize J the Jack Reacher character. Because if you didn't see the first movie, the first movie, Jack Reacher is OP as fuck. Okay? Like, he is literally just a juggernaut running through people. In the first Jack Reacher movie. Like I don't remember him ever. Having to really struggle. In the first movie. In this one he struggles. And he struggles a lot. Like there's there's a subplot that happens. And I don't want to say what it is. Because it will kind of spoil it. Because they don't really talk. They don't talk about it at all. In the previews actually. And that was one of the things that kind of like threw me off. When I actually went to go see the movie. Is that the movie kind of sells you on. Him going on this adventure. Or this this little like mystery romp with Colby Smolder's character, where she gets com convicted of a crime she didn't commit, right? So he comes in to help her out and clear her name. That's how the movie is kind of sold for me in the previews. I go to see the movie and they're doing all that, but then there's a subplot that comes in and they're just beating me over the head with it over and over again. I'm like, okay, I get it. All right, I don't care. Get to this thing over here that you had set up, right? They were doing that, and it was pissing me off a lot, and I got bored. I was sitting in that movie, and I was bored as hell. I drank a whole bunch of soda, so I had to go to the bathroom really bad. There were people saying that maybe that had to play a factor in me not liking the movie. It wasn't, okay? I know how to put my brain in more than one place, and, and sit over here and be like, oh shit, I really gotta go to the bathroom right now. And sit over here and be like, Jesus Christ, the movie's boring as fuck. Nothing's happening. You know, oh shit, an action scene just happened. Oh, never mind. It was just a little quick one. Okay. Like, it was just, it was, I don't know, man. I, I don't wanna flat out say that the movie was bad. I just wanna say that it's boring. And it's not worth going to see in theaters. It's not worth renting. It's, 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 I wouldn't even say it's worth watching on cable honestly like you could literally just skip this movie and wait for Jack Reacher 3 and just watch that cuz this movie I feel like is not worth watching so that's my whole thing and you want to talk about tone of a movie like I don't know what to feel in this movie either like this was worse than Doctor Strange where it was just like one minute they want to act like this is a fucking kids movie, and the next minute it's like this brutal people getting shot up and legs getting broken and you know people flying off balconies and shit. So yeah, man, it's just only good thing I can say about the movie is like Tom Cruise is Tom Cruise. I mean, he always delivers, even though. There's times in this movie where he kind of like goes a little overboard where it comes off as cheesy, like, you know, with the one liners and stuff like that. It's just it didn't it didn't work for me. Um, you know, I think uh, I think they even do it in the previews when he was like talking to that sheriff and the sheriff's all like, who the hell are you? And he's like, I'm the guy you don't want to call <laughs> or something like that. It was it was some weird and corny, but I was I was just laughing. Um the fight scenes are good. Like I said, there's action in the movie, which is good. It's just that it happens so quick that you really can't enjoy it. Um, main plot of the movie is... And, and that's the weird thing, too, is like the, the main plot of the movie, like the whole him trying to clear his friend's name and shit, like this one was actually more grounded and worked better in this one than it did in the first movie. Like the first movie had a pretty good story, but they kind of like shoot a curveball at you where you're kind of looking at it, just like, why the fuck did you 
have to add that in there? Why didn't you just stick with this? You know, but this one, like they just went way off the deep end with the subplot where I'm just like, why the fuck is this even in the in the movie? You know? And maybe it was in the book. I don't know. I didn't I didn't read the Jack Reacher books, okay? So I don't know what's what's going on. I can only tell you how it is as a movie, and I didn't think the movie was all that great. It was very boring. I don't recommend you watch it. So with that, I bid you do with the movies. That's gonna do it for this week of Movie Shoes Day. Okay? So take my information and do what you will with it. And let me know how it all turned out. Okay? You can hit me on Twitter at the Chules. Hit me on Instagram at True Vision. You can email me, chules85 at gmail.com. You can leave a comment below. Tell me I'm an idiot. Tell me I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Sorry, man. It's just my own opinion, okay? I'm just telling you what I know. I can't tell you what you should feel or what you should think, okay? I'm just recommending you some shit. So when you're sitting around and you don't have anything to watch, you can just, like, count on your boy here. And be like, yo, dog, you check this shit out. You know what I'm saying? So, that's all I can do. You know, sue me. So, uh, with that, you all take it easy. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to drink some NyQuil. Hopefully, I get better. Till then, that was Movie Tuesday. Now, it's just another day. Peace. And it was just another day, yeah. Yeah. Just another day. Until it went to the movies, now it's a movie Tuesday. Just another day. A movie Tuesday. Until a movie Tuesday.